Hello, in the previous video, we saw how to model a linear function. And in this video, we are going to go one step forward and start modeling nonlinear functions. Also, uh, there is a theorem that states that uh, if we have a neural network with two layers, and where the first layer, the activation functions are nonlinear, and the second layer is linear, uh, in that case, uh, that neural network is enough to model any continuous uh, nonlinear function. So we are going to uh, build a neural network with two layers, and we are going to start modeling a nonlinear function. Okay, let's uh, start. Okay, at the beginning, we are going to import the libraries. And then we are going to define our synthetic data set. I'm going to have 100 points between minus 2 and positive 2. And then we define our nonlinear function. And our function here is x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 minus x minus y. Okay, so we have our y. And we can also add noise to that. So we define our noise, we add the noise, and then we can plot it. And we can see we have a nonlinear function that we are going to model that. And x here is our input, and our output or our target is y. Okay, now we are going to have this class called nonlinear model. Inside this nonlinear model class, we are going to define first one linear model and then one activation function and at the end we are going to define another linear model so basically we are going to have two layers the first layer is a nonlinear layer which has one linear model and one activation and second layer is just linear okay so for linear one our first layer linear the input to that is the input size and the output is the h1. h1 is the number of hidden neurons. And then the output of that will go to the activation 1, which is a ReLU function. And after that, we have a linear 2 that the input to that is h1 and the output of that is the output size. So here our output is 1. Okay? And if we look at the forward function, we can see we have these three lines. The first two lines are for the first layer, and the third line is for the second layer. Okay, uh, let's initialize that. Here we have nonlinear model. The input size is 1, because our x is one-dimensional. And then we are going to define h1, which is number of neurons. Here we decided that to be 50. That could be different numbers based on the how complex our function is, but 50 is good here. And the output is also one because y is one dimensional. Also, this activation function we define here is called rectified linear unit. Let's look at its definition. Okay, if we go to PyTorch website, we are able to see the definition of ReLU uh, or rectified linear unit. And we can see the function is something like this. Uh, whenever it, the value of input is negative, that is just zero. And whenever it is positive, it's just a linear uh, function. And calculating that is actually very easy uh, because we can just use a maximum here and we say, okay, whenever X is negative, it's gonna be zero. And whenever X is positive, it's just gonna be X itself. Okay, this is the definition of ReLU. Let's go back to our code. Okay, we have our class here. We run that and then we are going to initialize that. And then we are going to define our optimization. We can go forward with the stochastic gradient descent. And you can see here I define learning rate as 0.001. The function for calculating the loss function, we can use uh, this function here, which is basically mean square error uh, written explicitly. Or we can just use the predefined function in PyTorch as MSE loss, so we can use that one. So we have our criterion and everything else is just similar to what we saw for linear models. So again, we define our number of epochs. Uh, we define an empty list to record the loss values that we could plot at the end. And then we have our uh, main uh, train function. And inside this function, we have our epochs that we go forward for each epoch. And we said that uh, we are going to use a stochastic gradient descent. 
so it means that we are going to update after getting each sample. Uh, we are using our model, which now is a nonlinear model. Uh, we calculate loss. Uh, we zero out the uh, gradients from previous calculations. And then we get the derivatives and we update the weights and biases. And let's run that. Okay, we can see that uh, gradually our nonlinear model is trying to uh, match to the nonlinear function that we have. Okay, we are done. And now we can plot the loss function and we are able to minimize the loss function. And one point that we should consider in PyTorch when we are creating a nonlinear layer is that we need two steps. The first one is to have a linear layer. The linear layer is going to do this for us. Uh, weights or W times X as the input plus the bias is going to give us uh, output Z. And then in the second step, we need to use our activation function. Uh, for example, here we used ReLU function. So the output is Z is going to be the input to that activation function. And the output of the activation function is going to be the output of our nonlinear layer. So every time that we have a nonlinear layer in PyTorch, we have to have two lines. The first line we write linear layer and in the second line we just use our activation function. The other point that we should mention here is that there is a theorem in AI and according to this theory if we have a two-layer neural network where the first layer is nonlinear and the second layer is a linear with enough neurons we should be able to model any nonlinear continuous function. So with the structure that we just defined here with the first layer nonlinear and the second layer linear with enough neurons, we should be able to model any continuous function if we have enough neurons. So in theory, there is a proof for that. And I highly recommend you to watch this video that I will put the link underneath of this video to go over that. And it's going to show you with a simple example how that is possible that with just having two layers we are able to model any nonlinear function. And the universal approximation theorem is probably the most important theorem in neural network. Okay, um, in this video, we covered how we can model a nonlinear function like this one. And we said that uh, for doing that, we just need to change our um, model class to a nonlinear model class. And for doing that, we defined uh, two layers and the first layer was a nonlinear layer and we said that the first line is just a linear model as we defined here and then the second one is our activation and then we have the second layer and everything else for the rest of the uh, code is similar to a linear function and we were able to match the output of the model to the target and at the end we showed our loss function. Okay, this is all we have for this session and thank you so much again for watching this video.